He'll provide, He'll provide, my son, the sacrifice lamb, God will provide. Starting now, from Macau to the world, the journey of faith to Mount Moriah, with a prayer from the altar of the UCKG Macau in the faith of the campaign of Israel in the Temple of Solomon. Through human effort and intelligence, monuments have been erected that are now considered the new wonders of the world. The Great Wall of China, Christ the Redeemer statue in Brazil, the Roman Colosseum, the Taj Mahal, and many others. All of them are impressive in their size, complexity, and beauty. But one place is special because it's not constrained by the physical world. The Temple of Solomon. What makes this place so special? Number one, it was designed by God. The inspiration for its construction didn't come from an architect, engineer, or any other brilliant mind. It's based on the design of the tabernacle, which the God of the Bible gave to Moses. Number two, it is holy. Of the many amazing places in the world, this is a replica of the only place that God chose and said, Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. I have chosen and consecrated this temple so that my name may be there forever. My eyes and my heart will always be there. The Temple of Solomon is not simply a magnificent building. Its spiritual significance goes far beyond its beauty. It is a place to both honor the God of Abraham and to be honored by him. May God bless y'all greatly in Jesus' name. Here we are giving continuity to the journey of faith. And if you can, please, I would like for you to share the link of this program with everyone that you know that is suffering, that is troubled, a person that is facing a situation that they lost hope in life. There are some that even lost the will to live. So share the link. And it doesn't matter who they are, the religion, it doesn't matter the type of faith that they have, or it doesn't matter if they even have faith at all. It doesn't matter because the word of God is for everyone. Is There is one thing that we see is that many people, they resist when we talk about the word of God because they think that we are talking about a specific type of people, that we are here sharing this message to a specific group of people. But that's not true. Because when we talk about suffering, suffering doesn't have a bank account. Suffering doesn't have a ethnicity, a skin color. It doesn't have a nationality. It doesn't have a religion. When suffering comes, when the problems comes, they strike everyone. It doesn't matter who they are. Unless if the person has the word of God with her. Because if suffering tries to strike a person that has the word of God, that person will overcome those struggles, will overcome those sufferings. But if the person doesn't have the word of God with her, so she becomes a target. She becomes vulnerable. So that's why, Pastor Oni, we want to remind them because every journey of faith, there's one thing that we repeat a lot is that it doesn't matter who they are. But we say this, but not to repeat ourselves. It is because it is true. It is what it is. There are many of, uh, many of them that are watching us right now and they resist. They say that it's just for the church, for the members, for the UCKG members. And that's not true. It is to all of those that are facing a difficulty, a situation. Yeah, the word of God is available to everyone. And God, it is a God of all, of all those who want to seek him. So regardless, you know, your background, your nationality, if there is any religion or not, this problem is for you. And if you are willing to learn, for sure, what you will learn here will help you to change the situation that you are going through. Exactly. Because God, 
You understand this. He wants to transform your life. God, we said this, if I'm not mistaken, the very beginning of the journey of faith, mm -hmm. that he doesn't create nothing in vain. He creates with a purpose. So he has created us in order to live within us. There is a purpose. So when God comes into a life, automatically that life is filled. The void disappears. The emptiness disappears. And all of the sudden, a life that was meaningless, it starts to have a meaning. Because God gives a purpose to someone's life. But pastor, how can you assure me of that? The testimony. The testimonies, they are the living proof of the word of God. So let us watch this testimony. And then after we will come back explaining exactly why the testimony is the living proof of the word of God that we will reveal to you today. But don't forget to put on the comment section below your name and the names of your family members. Every time that the program is on, we are watching. I take my time to read your comments, to read the names. So put there the names because we will be introducing your names into our prayers. Okay? So... Put the names there in the comment section below and remember to share the link of the program but without further delays once again let us watch the testimony and after we will come back i was in the church only focused on material blessings but i was far from god I started the church when I was young. I was uh, in the Sunday school. Then I went to the youth and I was raised as an assistant. My family, everyone was in the church. Everything was good. Every Sunday we we'll go to church. And my life was good. I was serving God. I was more involved in doing the will of God. Nothing mattered. All I wanted was to do the will of God. At some point, my vision changed. Now it was no longer about doing the will of God. It was all about what can this world offer me? I want a house, I want a car, I want to have money to do everything that I want to do. So I would only come to church um, on Sunday, early in the morning, I'll attend a service at six o'clock and then go to work. If there was any event that I was supposed to attend, I wouldn't come. If there was an event, Good Friday, I wouldn't. Every day I wanted to see myself working. So even if during the week I had a chance of coming to church, I wouldn't come. So my priorities changed. It was, it was no longer about God. It was all about what can I do? If I can work and make money, why not? So I did that for many years. In all those years, I remained in the church. Every Sunday I would come. If there was a purpose that I was supposed to do, I would do. There were campaigns introduced, I will participate, and God will answer me. I would grow in my financial life. But that mind of showing me that there is something missing, it never came. I was just increasing in living my own life. So the fear of God left me. Things that uh, before I wouldn't want to find myself doing, I will do. I'll find myself going to nightclubs with friends, and I'll be the one inviting them. Let's go, I will use my car. And the next morning I will come to church, I'll pray, I'll do all that I needed to do. Deep down I was dying, but I didn't notice it. Before, I wouldn't want to be involved with someone uh, outside, but then now I wanted to be in a relationship, I wanted to get married. I didn't even want someone in the church. I wanted to find someone outside that I would change myself. Then I started being involved in relationships, and if this one wouldn't work, I would move to another one. But instead of leaving the first one and going to the second one, I will take the, second, the first one and drag it to the second one. And then I'll take the second one and go to the third one, where I would find myself having four boyfriends at the same time. It was like everyone had the part that they were playing in my life. I couldn't let them go. And the more I increased them, I wanted more because I had this void inside of me. My mom will realize that I, I have changed and she started uh, calling me. Like every Sunday she will call me and ask me how was church. And I will mention, no, today I couldn't go because I was working. And then the next Sunday, uh, I'll tell her what was happening until I've realized that 
I need to go to church so that if she asks me anything, I'll have the answer to give it to her. My sister noticed that spiritually I was not the same because whenever I would speak to her, she will say I'm sensitive. I am spiritually sick and that offended me and I didn't want to talk to her anymore. Even though she was telling me the truth, I didn't want to hear that truth. And my mother being a mom, she saw that something was wrong, but she wouldn't like push it that way, the way my sister was pushing. So I felt comfortable speaking to my mom. And I remember there was a time I went home. When I went home a Sunday, I went to church. And when I looked at the board of the family, I saw my picture there wearing the uniform of the assistant. And that touched me. I saw the pain that my mom was in seeing me living a life that I was living, even though she didn't know the life I was living here in Jobek, but as a mom, she could see that I was no longer the same. I was no longer saving God. Because whenever she will ask me like things about the church, I wouldn't, I would be irritated, like I didn't want to talk about it. I remember even that time, even though I felt the pain, I told her that she must go and remove that picture because she's embarrassing and she's showing everyone that I, I fell. And then she said she will not give up until she sees me saving God again. And even though she said that, I came back, but it was hard. Every time there was an altar call, I will go. My God, I want to go back to my first love. When I go back, I will do the same thing. And then COVID happened. We were no longer coming to church. So we were connecting online, but I was not connecting online. And that was when I was stressed. When the churches were open, I went back uh, to church. There was a service at 10 o'clock and there was a video that was played in the church where a demon was manifested and mentioned that God is coming back. Jesus is coming back. The foot of God is already on the floor. What is your name? Altar Breaker. Altar Breaker? Yes. What do you do? How do you work in the lives of people, Altar Breaker? Me and my legion of demons work in the lives of those who serve or have already served your God. How do you work? Making them cold. What else? Making them cold. Your main assignment is to make the servants of God cold. From the moment that the person comes to the house of the Red Heart and does not practice what you speak through the man wearing white, the mind becomes seared. And that is when I work and make them cold. You have no idea. Of what? Of how close the return of your God is. And that made me to question myself. Where is my life with Jesus? Because I knew I was no longer doing the will of God. Even though I was coming to church, but I was not doing the will of God. I was doing my own will. Uh, though I wanted to change, but I had these thoughts of saying, because I left God, I left the first love. I knew the truth, but I was no longer doing. Everything that I was doing, I knew it was wrong. Even when I would do it, I knew it was wrong, but I would continue. So. Instead of me having that courage of uh, changing, it accused me. That's when my depression came. I was so depressed. I felt like God won't forgive me. When all those thoughts were coming, I remembered all the people that would come to church and God will forgive them. They will mention how they used to sin and God will forgive them. Then I said to myself, because I grew up in the church, I was an assistant. All these things is what makes me not to be able to go close to God. So my father, I'm no longer coming as that assistant. I'm no longer coming as a person who knows the truth. I'm coming as someone who needs you. And I surrendered my life to God. I said, my God, I did all that wrong, but now I want you in my life. I want to stop everything that I'm doing. So there was a campaign of Israel that was introduced in the church and I decided to participate. I said, God, whatever you ask me to do, I'm going to do it because all I want is you in my life. I was praying every hour at night. I said, my God, before 
I used to not sleep because I was stressed, but now I want to not sleep because I want you in my life. I used to pray every hour. Even when I was at work, I was praying in my heart. I was seeking the Holy Spirit in my heart. I would come to church every day. After I made my vow, I started uh, checking in my life everything because I wanted to remove everything. I wanted to make a place for God. Then I called all the people that I ever had relationship with. I asked for forgiveness. I, the others, I told them that I forgive. The one that I had a relationship with, I canceled all the relationships. So as my part of my sacrifice, I would pray every hour. I will come to church in the morning, half past five, I'll be in the church. I'll attend the service of six o'clock. I will go to work and then after work, I will come to church. I made sure that I was coming to church every day, Monday to Sunday as part of my sacrifice. And then my financial sacrifice, God spoke to me and he said, in all the sacrifices that you have done, I want that first one that you gave to me. And then for me, I felt that it was not enough because I was ready to give God everything. So I covered all the areas. I did a sacrifice, I did an offering. I went out, I assisted people that needed help. I bought uh, Bibles to assist people who didn't have Bibles because I really wanted God to answer me. So I had to do everything to call the attention of God because I really wanted God to look at me. I was so empty inside of me and I knew that only God can fill the space. It was only God who could fill the space. Nothing else in this world mattered. That's why I was ready to give whatever that God uh, wanted to me because all that I had, it meant nothing. All that I needed was God. On the day of presenting my vow, all I wanted to do was to honor God, to say, my God, I need you in my life. Look at me in as much as there are many people. Look at me, here I am, I want you. And when I climbed the altar, it was such an honor because it was a different one. Many times it was just for me to receive all these things, but now my priorities had changed. I needed something that no one in this world could give, only God can give. So I really needed to do something that God would really look at me. I wanted all the attention of God to me. I remember it was a Wednesday morning service. We were seeking the Holy Spirit. And I had told God that, my God, I want you to come and dwell in my life. I want to be able to talk to you anytime. That was the only prayer that I had. God, come in my life. God, come in my life. God, I don't want anything. I want the Holy Spirit. God, I can give you anything. I'm ready to give you anything. Only if you can give me the Holy Spirit. And he came and I received him and the joy in my life now. I, I remember how empty I was, but now I'm full of the Holy Spirit. And I'm, I thank God for what he had done for me because I never thought that he will come in my life. I always thought that God won't forgive me for all the things that I've done. But after he came, that's when I saw that God is merciful. His grace abides forever. After I received the Holy Spirit, the love for souls just came because I remember to stand outside and tell someone about Jesus, it was difficult. Even though when I come to church, I'll see people evangelizing. I would want to, but I didn't have that strength. But after receiving the Holy Spirit, that shyness of saying, what will I tell this person? If this person asked me, what would I say, it disappeared. Now, all I want to do is to tell everyone how God uh, can change their life. As he changed in my life, he can change to them. It doesn't matter what you did. It doesn't matter uh, how many times you sinned. God is merciful to forgive you. God is merciful to change your life. As he did to me, he can do to anyone. Simple things that they will ask us to do in the church, I couldn't do it. But now after I changed my priorities, it's a pleasure of being in the house of God every day. It's a pleasure of evangelizing. It's all about God now. It's not all about the other person. Now I have peace, I have joy, like I am happy. I wouldn't trade God for anything. Now, like, God is first, everything is after. When we prioritize God, God will do things that you never thought they exist. I'm working now, I have a car. Like, now it's no longer using my own strength to do anything. 
now is God doing it for me. Something that I never thought it was easy because at first I thought I needed to work every day to have all that I have. But God has shown me that if you put me first, I'll do everything for you. And that's what he's doing in my life. You see that in the life of this young lady, she felt as if she couldn't go out of that situation anymore because she had sunk so deep into a hole of problems that it seemed there was no solution, way out. And even worse, there were many of the times that she thought that she wouldn't be able. She knew the way out though. She knew the solution because she had the understanding, the knowledge of when she was first connected to God. But even though she knew there was something that was holding her back. And one of these things that hold people back, it is the fear, it is the doubt, it is the insecurity. It is that way of seeing yourself, of diminishing yourself that stops you from seeing what God wants to do within your life. Look, let us go to the Bible verse and you will understand. In the book of Jeremiah 29, 12, look what it says here. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Let's put the Bible verse on screen because there's lots of things to learn from here. It is very rich in teachings, this message. Then you will call upon me. So he's saying to call upon. He doesn't say a specific person. Then you, you who, you that is suffering, you that is facing a situation, this is for you. And go and pray to me. So go and pray to him. How do you pray to God? You talk to God. You do not need to use fancy words, fancy vocabulary. No, you just open your mouth and speak in the way that you feel comfortable in speaking. As long as you are thinking in God, you're speaking to Him. When you put your thoughts into God in that moment, you are elevating your thoughts to Him. So in that moment, you're praying to God. You start to speak directly to Him. And I will listen to you. So he reassures you that he is listening to the prayer that you're doing. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. So those that seek him, find him. But there is just one detail. Those that search for him with all of their hearts. In other words, with all of their lives. So here you see how available God is for you. He is available to you, my friend, that is struggling. Perhaps the world has rejected you. The world has forgotten you. But God, no. He has not rejected you. He has not forgotten you. On the contrary, God, He is here for you. The message, the testimonies, everything. But in order for that to happen, you need to embrace his words. Because Pastor Roni, when someone embraces the word of God, then we go back to the beginning of the journey of faith. The fire within us starts to ignite. Because the word of God incinerates this faith inside of us. Imagine right now, those that are watching us, that their lives are hanging by a thread. The marriage is broken. The life is shattered. They feel themselves as a lost cause. And now this word reaches them. And it says to them, hey, you have an opportunity of changing your life. So in the moment that these words are being spoken, if I were in their situation right now, this would ignite in me a flame of opportunity, of hope that will give me the strength to rise. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened also with Abraham. We we're talking a lot about Abraham. Abraham, he ignited this flame with the word of God because God appeared to him. God revealed himself to him and said, look, I'm going to give you a child, a child that you will have with Sarah, the wife that you love so much. And by the way, I'm going to make you the father of a nation. So those words 
ignited a flame within Abraham and Abraham started to follow the word of God. The same thing here, it is about to happen. If this person, of course, is ready to listen to what is being said over here. Yeah, because it is clear, while you are reading the Bible verse here, the word me repeats, you know, many times here, pray to me, call to me, come to me, I, can you see? So all that we need, we find in him, not in somebody else. And what happens sometimes is, oh, Pastor Rodrigo, that people, they, you know, they take so long to transform their life because they take also long to come to him, to come to Jesus. They want to find a life transformation in many ways. They want to find the solution for their problems in many ways through many people. But when they think that it is by themselves that they will solve the situation, instead come to him, it is how they probably become worse. And the life of the person become, you know, upside down. Because all that we need is to come to him. Like we spoke, I think, a few days ago in the program. Come to me. Here we can see that he said, pray to me, talk to me, come to me, and I will huh, give you what you need. I will hear, I will uh, attend to your call, I will listen to your prayer. So here we can find, you know, the key to change the situation that you are going through. You have to come to Jesus. Because look, everything that God speaks, it is not a coincidence. These words that are here within the Bible, it is not to sound repetitive. There is a reason behind this. So the word that is being used, the me and the me and the me, and again and again, it has a reason. It is like he wanted this word to be engraved in our minds for us to remind, for us to remember, for us to understand, to remind ourselves that he is the one that you must seek. To not leave space to doubt. He wants to be clear so that you might understand what he wants to do within your life. So look, my friend, you're broken, you're shattered. God is the way, the altar is the solution. Perhaps you're even inside of the church. You've been attending the meetings. You've been doing your daily prayers, but even though inside of you, you're broken. You are a person that once you were a person of faith, a person that had hope before, regardless of your religion, regardless of church, it doesn't matter. But you were a different person. You had that uplifting way of living, but then all of a sudden, you became broken. You stopped trying, you stopped fighting. So it's the time for you to rise. And we do not say this as a motivational speech. No, that doesn't work. What we are giving to you, it is the word of God. And the word of God brings with it his spirit. His spirit to all of those that abide by this word. That's why he says, when you search for me with all your heart, he listens to you. He cares for you. That's what he did for Abraham. That's what he did for Hannah. That's what he did for all of these testimonies that we have been seeing. And that's what he wants to do within your life here today. But in order for that to happen, you need to apply this, apply this trust in the word of God, trust in what he has to say. People have disappointed you because people, unfortunately, human beings as a whole, they fail but not God. God is no man to lie. God is no man to fail. God is God. God is the God of the impossible. He doesn't reject anyone and there's no problem that he cannot solve. And most importantly, he does not want just to solve a problem. He wants to answer your life. And how can he answer? You must gather the strength that you have, even though it is a little strength that perhaps is left just small particles but grab that and start to rise and in the moment that you start to apply little by little you will make yourself up again it won't be easy the first steps will be hard but at least you're taking action because right now you've stayed completely stagnated in your life 
So it's the moment to move forward. It is the moment to develop and to grow. And how do you do? You stand up and you fight based in the word of God. You have tried before in many ways, but unfortunately people try without God. That's the issue. Now it's the moment to do it, but with God. And that makes a difference. God is great to Pastor Rodrigo. Sometimes when you talk about God, about Jesus, people, they think that you are talking about that man that came. Jesus, before he came to this world as a human being, as a man, he already exists. We are talking about this God, that it is great. That it is the creator of heaven and earth, the creator of all. It is this God that is saying to you, come to me, call me, pray to me. I will help you. It is this God that you are talking about. Understand that as long as you are there taking time to give a step forward to come to him, you, be, you will be for sure, you know, struggling even more, beating yourself in, even more in, into this problem. So do not lose your time. Actually, do not, how to say, uh, I forgot this. There is a, a word that says a uh, very clear doesn't come to my mind now, but people that this, do not waste your time. Be there thinking about that you are going to find the solution for your problem in someone or somewhere else. It is in God. The creator of heaven and earth, it is calling you. It is inviting you. It just as we have been talking about, the altar is the place where you can meet him. Exactly. It is. And you know, Pastoroni, it is the opportunity to all. Mm. Because the faith, once again, we said this yesterday, it is an intelligent faith. It is a faith that brings results because it teaches us. So how can you start to overcome? By rebuking. You rebuke the bad thoughts, the weak thoughts. You need to start rebuking. If you don't, you, they will overwhelm you. And how do you rebuke? You don't give ears to those things. You don't let those things enter inside of you. You reject it. And that is what you must do. It is a must in order for your spiritual life to be able to develop. Because the problem is every time a bad thought comes into the person, mm. she holds on to that thought and it starts to circulate inside of her mind. And then she becomes imprisoned by it. But if she rebukes it, if she received those thoughts and she said, no, it's tied up. I don't accept this in my life. I reject this. I know these words, but they're not part of me any longer. It starts to change. Now, understand, once again, this isn't a motivational speech. We're not start talking here about the power of the word in that way that you're going to use the positive words to, to go against the negative words. No, not in that way. We're using the word of God, the word of him, because he will give to you the guidance. He will give to you the strength. He will give, he will feed to you the words that you need to use on your daily basis to overcome those negative words that have been surrounding you. I, I was thinking about here, Pastor Rodrigo, that in the past few weeks, we have the week of it is written. And if we do not use the word of God to overcome, you know, to overcome the problems, and not just to overcome, but above all, to feed ourselves from this word. We are going to be weak. We are going to be, you know, easily targeted by, you know, the evil forces to be destroyed. So the word of God has the power, you know, that we need to overcome, not just to solve the problem. Because sometimes when you say about overcoming, people, they only think about the problems. But overcome the doubts, like Pastor Rodrigo was saying. Overcome the fears. Overcome the conflict that comes huh, into your mind. Overcome the world because it is with the word of God, the most powerful weapon that we are going to break through to overcome. It is impossible for us to overcome, you know, to succeed, to have, you know, the salvation, the life transformation in a whole without the word of God. Exactly. Not only by the knowledge, but by practicing what he teaches to practice, to put into practice what is being taught and what has been taught. Just check the journey of faith. It has been on for Monday to Friday, 11 p.m. Just go back and watch and you will learn and you will develop yourself each day more. We have the series of the fast of Daniel. There are so many things that you can put into practice that will bring the results into your life. But the main one is going to the altar. Because when we go to the altar and we embrace the altar, 
The altar transforms the life of that person. It brings the person back to life. It ignites the flame inside of her. And that is what she needs. She needs this flame. Perhaps right now there are moments, there are peak moments that people feel strong. And then all of a sudden, they are brought down. But why that instability? Why there is this Ferris wheel, this roller coaster of emotion that she goes up and down, up and down. It's because of that. You need the word of God within your life. This is what brings the results. But in order for you to truly experience, you must live by the word of God. That's why Abraham, once again, the God will provide situation. God will provide by where? By his word. But you can only experience if you give yourself to God. And I will add this. When you give yourself to God, listen to me. You cannot have a plan B or C or D or E. It is just God and nothing else. There is no safety net. There is no plan B. With God, you must go all in. That's how you experience God. Because many, they go to God with a plan A, B, or C, or D. No, you got to go all in. To truly be able to experience, I have a question. Isaac, Abraham, did Abraham have a plan B? No. He said God will provide. That's how you experience God in your life. Perhaps every, every time the person tries to move forward, she goes, but with a plan B. In case this doesn't work, I will always have a safety, a place to go back. Don't. We go without turning back. We go trusting and relying on God. God tested Abraham's faith, but Abraham also tests God because he, he, he was, you know, decided indeed to present Isaac as a sacrifice. If it wasn't by God to speak to him, he would Come have through. done complete. So God tests Abraham's faith, but Abraham also tests God and we can see the results. So now you need to awaken your faith. So stand up, fight, do what must be done regardless of who you are perhaps you're there lingering you've been lingering for many years and because of it your life has been stagnated for so long it is the moment it is the moment listen this is a calling for all of you regardless of who you are the altar is calling so stand go to the altar if you have the faith nearest to you and talk to god my friend and be willing to listen to what he will say because pastor Roni, there is still time mm. there is still time for this person so without further delays i would like to make a prayer together with you to strengthen those that are watching us right now and then after prepare yourself because we're going to give to you the address of the altar that you have available here close to in macau but you also have an altar closer to your house closer to the place that you are and i am sure that there will be a pastor there that will receive you and that will help you to put into practice what you have learned throughout all of these days. Pastor Roni, please let us pray. Close your eyes, everyone. Pastor Roni, please. My God and my Father, right now, this person that has been connected with us tonight through this program, that was hopeless, that was weakened, that was, my God, thinking about to give up in life. Perhaps, my Lord, this person has been watching every single night the journey of faith, but still she was there, my God, wondering, just wasting time, thinking about, my Lord, trying to find ways to solve the problem that she's going through. But the only way it is for you, my Lord, for her to have a brand new life, a life transformation. So right now, let this person, my God, receive strength. Let this person, my God, be touched by your power, my Lord. And let this fire awake her faith and let her, my God, be courageous, be bold enough to do what she's supposed to do because for sure lord we have been talking to them throughout the journey of faith it is what we determine in the name of our lord jesus christ my lord and i agree in prayer it doesn't matter where this person is it doesn't matter who she is may your power visit them right now and strengthen them we pray for all of them lord we pray because there are so many that are suffering that are in pain that are aching as we have been saying throughout all of these days and only you god is the solution to what they're going through so may this living god enter right now your household your living space the place that we that you are 
perhaps you cannot even consider a living space perhaps it's just a space but regardless god answers right now and he gives you the strength in this moment he gives you the strength understand you're not alone all of the words of defeat of failure of doubt of insecurity that have kept you away from god that have kept you away from his word it is all removed right now because god is willing to receive you with his arms wide open the altar is available to everyone including to you you know who you are god is calling you in jesus name be set free amen there it is my friend now it is up to you as i said the address of our uckg here in macau is in the macau square on the unit m on the 10th floor and the address will be there down below on screen okay the church is available to you on wednesday tomorrow we will have a meeting 11 a.m 4 p.m but mainly at 10 p.m 11 a.m i will be with you 4 p.m pastor Roni, but at 10 p.m we will be all together united in one faith come prepared come prepared come with an open mind let go of the past and embrace fully what the lord will have to share with you because i can assure you that by the word of god he has something extraordinary prepared but you need to take a step forward start to implement to put into practice what you have learned here throughout this journey of faith okay so once again this wednesday this wednesday tomorrow at 10 p.m we invite you all to come and join us okay remember the journey of faith continues so may god bless you all and i'll see you all tomorrow in the continuity of the journey of faith god bless